Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome to the last match of the first round of Speed Chess Championship 2020 and the last pairing is Anish Giri against Vladislav Vartiemiev. Now, Anish Giri is a very, very interesting person. Uh, he is half Nepalese, half Russian. Uh, he was born in Russia and raised in Japan uh, and then he lives in Netherlands with his Georgian wife. So quite a cosmopolitan person. Uh, he is 26 years old uh, and in the Blitz with the ranking 2752 in Blitz time control. He is number 24th in the world. In the game I would like to show you he is going to play as white and his opponent Vladislav Artiemiev, a young grandmaster from Russia. Very, very fast and very strong in the blitzes. Uh, number 11 in the world with the ranking 2783. In this game, he is going to play as black. Uh, and now, the, the, the situation in the match is like uh, Vladislav Artemiev actually is two points ahead. So Anish Giri has to win this game and then one of the another games to equalize and, and then maybe to advance to another round. So very, very important game uh, but we also have some interesting tweet about that so uh, without further ado let's see what happened in the game I will tell you about the tweet at the end of the game so stay tuned we have e4 by Anish Giri c5 um, Sicilian defense knight f3 e6 French variation d4 c takes on d4 and um, knight takes on d4 knight c6 Paulson variation and now knight c3 we have a6 knight takes on c6 b takes on c6 and now um the main idea here is actually bishop d3 and castle as fast as possible so for example d5 a uh, castle and so on however anish giri plays uh, some unorthodox move and it's quite a sideline queen d3 it looks like doesn't make any sense because now the bishop is blocked but after d5 anish went for the queen g3 and now black, for example, cannot uh, develop the bishop because the queen is watching a g7. We have in the database couple of moves with the knight f6, but also h5 with the idea of h4. So this is well known. However, we have knight e7 by Artemiev, uh, and this is pretty strange move, also blocking the bishop. But the idea is with the jump with this knight to beautiful um, f5 square. Now, for now, it's controlled by the by the pawn, but the pawn is under attack uh, so there is no problem we have h4 by Anish Giri we have d takes on e4 as planned um, and now after knight e4 of course knight f5 so the queen has to be moved queen f4 and now c5 not bishop the e7 which looks pretty good but first c5 opening this diagonal so Artemiev wants to bring the bishop to b7 First, uh, we have bishop d3, Anish Giri also um, want to develop the pieces, we have bishop b7 as planned, and now instead of playing something like bishop d2, uh, probably the best move in the position, uh, for example, queen b6, and then castle on the queen side, um, and then for example, after knight d4, bring the bishop, and both of the bishop would work on this diagonal, uh, and the position looks pretty attractive for white. So definitely great idea. However, we have H5. So what Anish Giri wants to do is first kick this knight uh, and then play the move um, H6, which can be in some variations a very, very big annoyance. And I will show you one of the variation how dangerous um, this can be, because we see uh, a lot of games where uh, super grandmasters play that move, uh, but uh, we've never seen uh, how dangerous it can become. For now, we have queen d4. Now, very tricky move, uh, testing defense of the white pieces. We have rook h3 and now c4. So this is the plan. If the bishop is moved, then actually the knight's gonna be lost. So first we have c3 kicking the queen uh, of course the queen has to move somewhere so we have queen d5 and only now bishop c2 we have bishop e7 so artemiev want to castle as well 
Queen g4, uh, trying to scare Artemiev, but Artemiev uh, is not scared here. He calculate everything uh, as he if he can calculate because this time control is one minute, one second incrementation. So um, a lot of blunders are possible. However, the, the players, of course, uh, see quite a lot. Uh, so we have the castle. Bishop g5 with the threat already uh, exchanging the bishops uh, and then jump to the, to the f6 and uh, with this beautiful fork Anish Giri would actually win. So very tricky position uh, and now what can be played is actually bishop g5 or f6 but we have king h8 uh, by Artemiev and now bishop e7, uh, knight e7 and finally h6. Uh, we have also g6 so now there is the problem with the square, the dark squares uh, and Anish Giri will try to exploit that. So we have queen h6 with the idea of delivering the, the checkmate on g7 and now just for your information knight f5 doesn't work uh, because after queen f6 uh, king g8 there is the problem yes the knight controls actually g7 but g4 uh, and this knight has to go somewhere and we're gonna have a checkmate on g7 so probably knight um, h6 but of course this is also losing so this is why we have f6 we have also rook d1, now kicking the queen, uh, and now instead of moving the queen, uh, we have knight f5. Very sharp variation, a lot of calculations, and Anish Giri didn't find the strongest continuation here. He had a very, very attractive move. You can actually uh, try to pause the video, it's not easy to find, uh, but this is quite attractive and fancy tactic which doesn't leave straight to the win however to much better position and some interesting ideas so uh, the move we are looking for is actually queen f6 because the queen this queen is still under attack and this is of course check so rook f6 uh, and now rook d5 and after bishop d5 then pick up this rook so this is the this is the trick and now look at this knight the knight is on the dark square and the and the pawn is also on the dark square so let's say white for example uh, take the free pawn on uh, g2 uh, but then bishop f5 first and then bring the rook all over uh, here and deliver a checkmate on h7 very very tricky black cannot don't have time actually to go for the uh, uh, for the knight because this pawn gonna be lost and after taking the knight we gonna have a checkmate on the 8th rank 7th rank is weak and 8th rank uh, is weak so both of the ranks uh, would be weak so this is why this pawn together with the knight can be extremely extremely dangerous uh, watch at this all the squares are covered actually and the king have to stay there so all white have to do is deliver a checkmate so for example rook c8 defending the pawn but then rook d4 and there is also another way um, let's say bishop c6 rook d6 now and now the, the rook actually uh, can come this way. It's very difficult to actually do anything. Bishop e8 this way, maybe that would be the last, uh, but still rook a6 and this pawn was, was the key pawn and even uh, black play bishop f7 and actually defend that pawn, uh, it's still losing because after rook g7, whatever black play doesn't really matter uh we're gonna have just exchange all of the pieces and now this pawn you can calculate four moves and the king is not on time uh, to actually stop the stop the pawn so uh, this could be very very attractive uh, you know queen f6 and then bring the rook uh, all over here to h7 and try to deliver a checkmate would be very beautiful however we have queen f4 also very sneaky move uh, uh, because the queen can come to c7 and deliver the checkmate on g7 so it was very important now to play e5 e5 but Artemiev didn't find it so uh, after e5 what could happen is for example queen d2 um, and after let's say exchanging everything uh, we would have some boring position like this one would be very difficult actually to uh 
to win that game by any of the sides. However, we have queen b5 uh, and this is a very, very serious mistake. Artemiev goes after the pawn on b2. We have g4 kicking the, the knight first and here uh, the best variation actually for, for black would be e5 or g5. One of these two moves and uh, and it's still uh, very bad for black. So white has completely winning positions. So e5 we already known, but g5 would be also very interesting because now actually white can temporarily uh, sacrifice the knight. Knight g5, f takes on g5, queen g5 and after let's say queen e5, uh, rook e3, look how tricky that, that would be, uh, the, the knight cannot take because the queen is hanging, uh, so queen f6 and after exchanging everything, uh, g takes on f5 and after e takes on f5, white have advantage because can actually access to the 7th rank. So, for example, bishop c6, so um, the, the rook cannot get there, uh, but then rook d4 and, um, yeah, probably rook h6, rook c4, and white stands slightly better. There is still a problem with the seventh rank. So, uh, black would have a lot of problems, actually, uh, in this variation. Uh, g5 but it's still the best move or e5 uh, it's still the best move in the in the position however knight d7 and artemiev blundered the game uh, but Anish Giri, of course, have to continue his plan. So I hope he played a queen f4 for a reason, because now queen c7 wins the game. Uh, the point is that the knight is under attack and the knight cannot be moved, because if the knight is moved wherever, um, here, of course, gonna be uh, lost. And if uh, here we're gonna have a checkmate, so probably rook a to e8, but then uh, white can actually uh, win the piece this way uh, or even stronger move would be rook d7 now rook d7 wins the piece and black cannot defend both of the pieces both of the pieces are attacked twice so uh, even if black tries to uh, win the bishop it's too slow because after rook e7 rook e7 queen e7 we're gonna have a checkmate and um, uh, rook g8 then queen f6 and this way or another this actually is a checkmate so uh that was a chance queen c7 was winning the game uh but Anish Giri didn't find it. He was worried about this, this pawn on b2 uh, and he played b4. Uh, we have c takes on b3, a takes on b3 uh, and now knight d5 controlling c7 now attacking the queen. So here is the problem. We have queen d2 and now queen b6. And here, very important, Anish Giri still have a, he missed his opportunity to just win the game. However, he still have a winning position. C4, C4, extremely strong. The, the knight have to go back and then the queen can come actually to C3 and together with the knight attack on the F6. And this knight cannot defend it anymore because he is under attack. But Anish Giri didn't see this plan and he played G5. G5, maybe he saw that plan but he wanted to to open this diagonal and probably he was calculating something like f5 uh, and then let's say then play c4 uh, and then after f takes on e4 c takes on d5 this is still on the board very dangerous so probably king g8 d takes on e6 queen e6 and then queen d4 uh, of course the rook can come to f7 rook e3 and the position is pretty solid so uh, it's very difficult to to say which side would win the game However, white stands slightly better, probably have a better uh, chances actually to win that. Uh, but we have f takes on g5. So yes, Artemiev opened this diagonal, is pretty dangerous, but at the same time, uh, he keep an eye on the f2. So for now is defended by the knight and by the queen. But remember, both of the players have seconds on the clock uh, and everything can happen here. Uh, again, c4. c4 is a very strong move. Now the point is that after knight f6 and knight g5, 
For example, if black plays rook to, to d8, it looks pretty logical because it's, it's very well guarded and now black can exchange couple of pieces here. However, after queen d8, that would be the blunder because boom, and after exchanging everything, the knight at the end jumps to f7. Very beautiful fork. So of course, uh, white is winning with extra rook, white is winning. So uh, probably after knight g5, what would happen is uh, rook a to e8 just to defend the pawn and, and then let's say rook e3 and again the position maybe it's slightly better for white but it's still very very difficult uh, to find them actually winning continuation uh, however we have knight g5 immediately and now uh, Anish Giri is in trouble. So knight f4 and he has to calculate very precisely with the seconds on the clock, uh, almost impossible. The rook is under attack and uh, what he should play is actually rook g3 or maybe rook h2 uh, just to take under control g2. The point is if the knight for example jumps to g2 then the king can come to f1 and together with the rook uh, can actually win uh, one of the two pieces for the rook so that was possible however Anish Giri actually uh, played rook f3 so um, I don't know he blundered the, the, the exchange or he was so afraid of this of this move uh, and he was thinking okay I'm gonna lose the exchange anyway uh, but this actually is uh, losing because now bishop f3 uh, with the attack on the rook of course the knight which is really well placed knight this knight doing really great job with this threat of the uh of the of the king and the and the d8 square however now the knight go back to the defense and now it's only artemiev who attacks so we have rook a to d8 uh, and now uh, there is not much choice the queen is under attack anish giri should just retreat uh, he didn't want to he blundered the knight now boom knight d4 uh, and now of course we're gonna have e5 so the knight is pinned Anish Giri tries queen e3 with the very sneaky idea of attacking e5 and deliver checkmate. However, now this is Artemiev who delivers the, the, the last move and it's knight g2 actually uh, forking the king, forking the queen uh, and winning the game because Anish Giri in this position resigned. And the promise to it, look at this. Anish Giri lost that game and also lost one more game. Uh, so... Uh, uh, chess.com tweeted fun hashtag speed chess championship fantasy update fantasy contest actually the players and uh, the, the subscribers of chess.com can actually try to guess the scores so um, Anish Giri actually has the 12th place after correctly guessing that Artemiev will would beat him by four points and this is what exactly happens Anish Giri uh, lost by four points so he actually guessed precisely very precisely uh this the score here and now he is the two in the 12th place um in this uh, fantasy uh, contest so pretty funny a uh, situation drop me the comment do you think that anish giri lost on purpose this was completely winning game for him so this is pretty funny i don't want to you know share any conspiracy theories uh but it looks you know pretty funny and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss another games in the speed chess championship press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one